I'm now going to demonstrate perhaps one of the most difficult elements of working from the human figure. I'm going to have a go at doing a demonstration of a portrait just in pencil. First of all I'm hoping to get a likeness and then I'm hoping to use some tonal shading to get more of a, a photographic quality. First of all I'm going to start out very light and very sketchy. I don't want to put any detail in until I'm happy that it's positioned in the right place. Quite often a portrait, if you're a little wrong by a millimetre, can look like someone's sister and not them. So fingers crossed and here we go. When I'm doing a portrait, it's very important to really have a good look at the person who's sitting for you and have a look at their face characteristics. Now for me, what would make this portrait have more of a likeness is if I get Helen's nose right. That for me is one of the most important parts. So I'm just going to try and position the features. She's not looking straight on to me, I have a slight three-quarter view. So I'm giving myself a guideline vertical that goes down the centre of the nose between the eyes and also goes through the base of the nose and the lips and this will just help me make sure that my features are in the right alignment. Quite often our brain wants us to do the face as though it's looking straight on and you often have to fight yourself and just look really hard. A guideline in for my eyes, a guideline for the nose, and a guide for the mouth. And these are so light, these are quite easy to be able to rub out. Helen's nose isn't a long nose, and I'm just wondering have I got the depth of my nose right before I continue? I think I'm okay. I'm going to put some eye detail in and then look again. I'm going to use a vertical to see how far the nose comes out in relation to the eye. I'll give myself a little guide. These little cross referencing marks will help me to position the nose and mouth correctly to the eyes. The nose is always a very difficult part to draw and I like to start by trying to position the nostrils and then to take the nose back up the face. Again my baseline, this nice little vertical I've given myself, I know that my nostrils are almost even either side. That's enough for me at the moment. I'm going to carry on working downwards. And here I'm definitely finding that my little reference line for my mouth is too low. I do need to bring that up. The darkest part of the mouth is always that centre line. And until you're confident with drawing a face, always try and draw a face where the mouth is gently shut because doing teeth and a smile is another level of difficulty. And it's very easy to get a cross-eyed model just by not positioning the pupils correctly. So I'm going to take a little bit of time just to make sure that the pupils are the same size and at the same point in the eye. And I have a light face against a dark background. So again, I'm going to use some of this nice background area to create some tone so that lighter face will come forward.
And I think, rather than Helen looking like a Roman statue, it may be time as well to get the dark tones into the eyes, make her come alive a little more. Now I'm faced with an absolutely gorgeous pattern on this dressing gown and I ask myself the question, am I going to do it? No way. I think this portrait, if I'm starting to do busy detail work down into the dressing gown, is going to take away from the detail that we've already got. Now for me, I'm not far off finishing this piece of work. I could take it further, I could maybe spend four hours on it, but again we've got to think of the model staying in pose and also this demonstration is to show how to start to structure and how to start to work tonally rather than how to do a photographic portrait. So thank you for joining me for my portrait demonstration.